Hello guys, welcome back to Space for Edit. My name is Cynthia and on this channel we talk about all the things that they don't teach you in design school but you need to know in the real world. Today's video, I hope you don't mind the echo, I hope you don't mind the cars going past. We'll just have to work through it because we are technically on site tonight. So the lowdown is I wanted to do this video to show you all the kind of little bits and bobs that you need to know when you go and do a site survey for an interior design project. But because I'm currently not doing my own project, I'm freelancing, I haven't really had the opportunity to actually go on site, on real site, and um, do it there. So what I have done today is I contacted my local yoga studio. This is where we are. This is where I come for yoga as well. So it's a quite a nice place to be. And I am going to pretend that I am doing a site survey. So everything is very much on point, real life kind of advice. It's not kind of like, well, maybe we could do this, maybe we could do that. I can actually show you real life examples of the things that you need to keep note of and look out for. I am getting sweaty already, but Let's just work through it and get on with the video. So I have some things with me that I usually take to site surveys, site visits. You've seen my video about site visits where I share some of the tips. It was kind of a vloggy video. I'll link it below in the comments. You have probably already seen this, but let's just go over it very quickly and get to measuring the site. So first things first, I don't know the proper name for this. I call it a laser measure. Um, or just a laser and it's this little dude that just gives you the dimensions of overall space. It's super handy, you have to have it, this is not an option, you have to have a laser to have the cross dimensions, ceiling heights, just perfect for that, you need it. Then obviously a little handy uh, tape measure. Ooh. Have that for the little nooks and crannies, window sills, window ledges. I'm, I'm just looking around the room, I'm, the door heights, and just things like that. You can just go around and take measure. I've got different color pens, a pencil, and like a marker. Just so when I'm making the plan and I'm drawing things up, I can use one color for notes, one color for dimensions, maybe the pencil to draw up the floor plan, highlight anything that needs highlighting you know just grab different colors different options so not everything is in the same color it's so much easier when you go back to the studio and sit down to cut it up it's so much easier to see if you have it in different colors then the next thing i have is my two pads one little pad that i just keep on my general notes and then like a bigger pad that i actually use for drawing taking the survey. Some people like to have like a proper A3 size paper pad, drawing pad, whatever you call it. And that is fine, that works as well. But I think in real life, in real world, when you actually go to site visits, you don't really have the capacity to carry around like big A3 size. So anything that can just fit in your own bag, that is probably the best solution. So I tend to use pads like these and then it's good to have this kind of edge to it so you can just flip it around Let's see you know you can just flip it around like that there's actually a floor plan there from a previous project yeah so you can flip it around and it's easy to change it instead of being like a hard one and then you can't bend it and you know just little things, little things that speed up the process because it's always about the speed. You only have limited time to go around the space most of the times. So you have to be quick, you have to be on point and you have to know what to look out for. That's actually the next thing that we'll do. Let's walk around the space and I'll talk you through the things that you need to look out for when you are doing a site survey. And I also forgot to mention that I always have my phone with me and make sure it's charged and you have plenty of memory space in it because you're going to be taking videos, photos, um, 
close-ups and all sorts of things there's going to be a lot of footage that you need to take back with because most of the times you're not going to get an option or chance to go back to site let's say example you know site could be all the way across the country and you don't really have the option to nip in and out so you need to make sure that you take plenty of photos plenty of videos make all the notes and uh, yeah more is better in this scenario so the actual studio is quite like a big long space like it carries on behind there and then there's like a reception area over here so I could in real life I would be taking measures of the whole space altogether but for the purpose of this video I'm just gonna do this room because there is plenty to work with and plenty else to take so let's just go around the room I'll flip you around and explain all the little bits and bobs that I'm gonna be making sure that I'm gonna be taking notes of Okay, I hope that little voiceover made sense. There's just a lot of little things that you need to keep in mind as you do the site survey because all of those little things will make a big impact later on down the line when you do electrics, when you do any kind of floor layouts. You just need to be aware of these things and it's very important because you don't want to get to the install stage and then suddenly there's like, wow well the plans don't show all of this detail or they don't show that there's a there's plumbing running through there or there's a socket right there so all of that is really your responsibility and it's a lot especially when you're on site and there's time pressures and you're on your own and you're trying to do everything but you know that's the job we're in that's what we do What I just did is I named, oh, focus. I named the sketch that I'm doing it off so that this is the main yoga room. You can do it bit by bit. Let's say you are surveying quite a big space. You don't always need it all to be on one page. Like you will piece it together later on. So as long as you have one space, or like a half of a big space even if it is you know divide it up as you can they can be on different pages so this one's for the main yoga room as i called it now myself and, and all i basically did is i created this big sort of shape the shape that the room is i've made a note of all the doors that are in the room and the direction that they are opening out to that is very important as well i've made a note of the windows like it doesn't need to be accurate i don't like to do mine accurate like i haven't got time and patience for it so it doesn't have to be accurate and um, this is sort of the indication of the mirror wall that we have over there so now what i'm gonna do is i'll trace this over so it makes a little bit more sense with like a black pen and then i'll start going around the space take dimensions start with cross dimensions first and then carry on with like all the little bitty bits and bobs um so yeah let's do that right so laser so first you turn it on for me it's this little button it's just a little tick and it starts off with like zero zero so what i'm gonna do now is take the cross dimension along this way and along that way so i will know sort of the overall dims of the space and all you do is make sure you activate the laser here see but basically what it what you will do is imagine that this is the wall and you put in it flat against the wall there is also like a little um bubble here so when you put it against the wall you can see whether you are straight or not <sighs> I don't really pay attention to that because it's honestly not that deep literally honestly just take the dim fish bash bosh and move on to the next thing so I'm gonna go and do that now it's 
so there we go we've got our measurements and the good thing is you can actually take I think up to three different measurements without like stopping and writing them down as long as you remember in which order you took the measurements so for me I know that the top number there is the length of the room and the other is the width of the room so all I need to do is just write that down on a sketch Another thing that you need to do is remember to write these cross dimensions in bigger numbers, bigger letters, so they stand out more and then the little di dimensions can be a bit smaller. Um, just again, easier to read and if you need to pass on the document to anyone else they will understand it better. And always write on the dimensions in the direction that they are going. So for example, if this is a cross dimension of the length then I'm gonna write it this way and then the width is in a different angle. Does that make sense? Yeah? Okay, move on. The next thing that I need is the ceiling height of the space. So all you do now is you take your laser measure Take your laser measure, try not to break it. Again, just activate the laser so it's all on. Put it down on the floor, make sure the laser's activated, and make the reading. And it's two meters and three, 30 centimeters. Two thousand bit. The fact that I just messed that up and uh, I didn't know how to explain it just made me think of another thing to tell you. All the dimensions, at least in this part of the world that I am in, are written in millimeters. So when you go and start to cut up your drawings, they will be in millimeters as well. So the, the length of the room is 14 meters and 36 centimeters. So instead of writing 14.36, I'm writing 14,363. So those are millimeters. That makes sense. And now I'm going to just make a note of the ceiling height. So the way you write it on the plan is a little ch and write down your height. And I like to box it in as well or make a circle around it, whichever. Just make sure that it kind of stands out a little bit more because those are one of the main dimensions. And if you would have like a space that's got a bit of a more complicated shape, and there's different ceiling heights in different areas that will be easier to read as well. Let me just explain what I just did there. So I love my laser measure, like I said before, I'd rather figure out a way how to take dimensions with the laser <laughs> rather than pulling out the measure tape. So what you do if you don't have a wall to read the measure against is you basically create a wall with your pad. So what I do is if I can stretch it or if you've got another person doing the side survey with you, perfect, this is a no brainer. But in places that you can stretch, as far as your arms can stretch, you create a wall with your pad um, activate your laser, make sure it's there, and just place the reading. Does that make sense? And um, now I know what the reading is. It's right there. Top tip. What I've now done, well, I roughly have all the dims around the room so all the little bits in between all the doors in between so i've got the cross dimensions i've got the ceiling height now what i will do is i'll look at the heights of things so for example the height of the mirror box there um the height of those um trucks of the trucks where, where all the electrics are going around. I'm just making notes of those. There's radiators, there's notes to make on the windows. And I'll go around and do that separately. When you have two people doing site survey, it's a lot easier to do it all at once as you are going around the room. Especially when you have a room that's not just as simple as this one. It just saves time. But for me, for 
the purpose of this video I'm doing it now and I will also what I'll do is I'll draw like little elevations and show the dimensions on those elevations because it just makes sense later on when you cross check in with the site photos and you can see like oh okay I know that's the dimension there um, if you would just make a note and say the height of this is this and that that will work as well but ideally you want like a tiny little sketch it only takes a few seconds to do that anyway so you might as well okay so that's what I'm gonna do now So just in case if you have something that is existing and the client has said that they want to keep so for example maybe in the brief this logo that they already have they might want to keep it might want to relocate it keep it in the same place you need to make sure that you take the measurements of that as well because you will have to obviously consider that when you do your design so that's what I'm gonna do now So at the end of a site survey, what you need to make sure you, ooh, let's just adjust the lighting. Okay, so at the end of a site survey, what you need to make sure that you walk away with is your cross dimensions, your ceiling heights, your just overall dimensions. Good for you. Heights, heights of things, so your little, elevation sketches anything that is existing do little sketches do perspective drawings whatever you need to do so that's always the trickiest part i feel like when you have something that you can just completely get rid of and live happily ever after that's easier than saying that maybe you're doing a restaurant project and there's tables that you need to keep or there's some wall decoration that needs to stay, you know, things like that. And then that's very time consuming. Oh, and another thing, as I said before, all the light fittings, um, any exit signage, anything like that, take a note of that as well. If you can take dimensions of it as well. If I was to do anything with the ceiling, if I was thinking, okay, I'm gonna do something with the ceiling and the electrics and whatnot, I'm gonna make sure I take note of how far of each other these are and all of those things. And same with the heaters as well. If I was to do anything with them, I would properly like have to survey it. But I just can't guys. I will tell you what to do, but I'm not gonna do it. I feel like I've done a lot already. The next thing that you need to make sure that you walk away with is photos and videos. I think a lot of designers overlook the video part of things and it's like, oh, why, why not? Why not do it? I feel like photo is good. Yes, you can zoom in, you can kind of, you know, get all the detail but with video you can kind of walk around the space and like see it all in action almost like coming all together so if you do like a video walkthrough it just captures a lot more information than maybe a photo would so what i'll do now is i'll take some snapshot of the kind of a like angles that you should definitely focus on and have on the space and i'll just screen record it I think on my phone so this is another reason why you need to have your phone charged because everything's gonna be on there okay I'm gonna do that now do a little voiceover to explain what I'm doing and why I'm doing it and hopefully that will make sense so first things first always get a photo across the room from each corner so if I was to take a photo I would take one here I would come to this corner I take a photo from here and the same from both two directions and then the next most simple thing is to literally just start with one corner and make your way around the room simple as that so if I was to do it now I'd take a photo here snap snap and snap okay and then I'll move up maybe towards the middle of the room. 
Yep, so this is roughly that. And I'll take a snap and a snap and a snap, right? And then we'll do the same over here. So snap and snap. And the same again, we'll move around the space and we'll just copy, paste, repeat all the process that I've just done. <laughs> what that gives you is the assurance that you have um, kind of covered the whole room and all of the spaces just in general. And then the next thing that you can do is you can walk up and take all those little photos, close-ups of how things are sticking together, what's the detail there, like I said before, what are we doing with these heaters? How is the current electrics sorted? Um, any lighting, any <clears throat> emergency lighting, anything like that. Same again, you can even go up and take close-up details of your window sills, of the um, radiators and everything like that, of your doors as well, depending on how much detail you will be asked to kind of include in your design. And as far as now the video goes, I really don't know where to look at. Am I looking at myself? Am I looking at the camera there? What am I doing? As far as the video, I'm, I'm just looking at the camera there, okay? As awkward as it's gonna be, this is doing. Um, so, video, video, taking video of the room. Um, it's all up to you. If you are doing this for social media purposes, I would recommend switching the camera. If you are doing this for um, design purpose and you're gonna be watching back this footage on your computer, then do it kind of um, landscape, um, just because it's it makes more sense. You're gonna be able to see more detail. So when you go about video, it's very much the same thing. Um, I always like to start with just coming in from the entrance um, and kind of like going on the journey through the space. So if I was to even go up to the room, I don't want to talk too loud, but let's just see around. So I would come up, film it all anything so we know we've got a camera there we move in have a little like general zoom around the space and then just start with the detail you can go back where you came from make sure you make a good video of that move around and you get the idea right Zoom in, go in where people can't maybe see as much. Again, go around there and just move around the space. Stop for a bit, pan around, or maybe you find something that you need to um, make notes of. Again, just walk around the room, pan around. Make sure you don't like do it like that. <laughs> <laughs> try to ideally you want something like this that I have now with you a little um, tripod that you can hold on because that makes sure that your movement is a lot smoother and it's just a lot more pleasant when you are looking back and if you're giving this footage to someone else it will be a lot easier for them so don't uh, wobble the camera too much and try to kind of go slowly even though people can um, still kind of slow it down and pause the video, it is important that you kind of take it all in, if that makes sense. So just take your time, slow down a little bit, take a deep breath, and there we go. And then you could move on, obviously, if we were to do the rest well, there you go. <laughs> One thing that I told you to do, free up space, memory space in your phone, happened to me. It's a bit of an issue, isn't it? For content creator especially, I've got just too much footage 
Anyways, back to this video. We've done it all. So we've covered the basics. We've got the floor plan sorted. We've got the heights. We have paid attention to detail. The more you can put on your notes, the better. So you might want to go over the plan that you did. Where is my notepad? Okay, so if I was to do this like properly as a job job, I'd probably just go around the space and take my highlighter and just make notes, make like little highlights here and there of just things that, I don't know, might need extra attention. You can also create like little key on the side of your survey, like a different kind of hatches, a different type of flooring, different kind of wall covering, anything like that. As you would with like a general plan, either a flooring plan or electrics plan, anything like that, you can do all of that in your sketches. It all just depends on the brief and the time that you obviously have to do things. So we've covered that, showed you how to take photos of the place. Literally more is more, more is better take videos, photos, and on top of that, if you can fit it in, and you should be fitting it in, take some social media footage and always do it vertical, do it portrait style, because that's how we see content on social media these days. Check out my Instagram if you want some ideas of what type of content to take when you are on site visits and you're doing this sort of stuff. And there you go, now you're ready to go back to your studio, go back to your desk, and cut it all off or maybe pass it on to your team members or whoever is going to be doing the floor plans for you. So I hope you enjoyed this video. This was a bit crazy. I could definitely not do this if I was on a real project. This was just too much to handle, to think about all the angles and ooh, stuff. But I hope this was useful. Let me know if you have any questions in the comment section below. Subscribe, like the video if you are into this sort of thing. Make sure you come back for all the next videos. I've got some videos here. This is going to be the one that I said about the site visits. If you want to chat more, follow me on Instagram. I'm always there doing all sorts of things. And if I don't see you there, then I'll see you in the next video. Okay guys, bye.